Okay guys, so this is the um, advanced tutorials in the shark fish game step number five of the Alice unit. So if you want to take your program and make it a little bit fancier, I'm going to show you some ways how. Uh, in this tutorial, what I'm going to show you is how to work with the cameras a little bit and also how to animate the shark. You guys already know a bit about animations from the witch tutorial if you tried the level four part for that. Um, so the first thing is we already have our fish swimming randomly and um, we have the shark control. This is from the basic tutorial. If that doesn't look familiar, you're in the wrong tutorial. Um, so go back one step and find the basic shark tutorial before proceeding. So far in the game, if I run it right now, all we have is a fish that talks briefly, a shark that explains how to control him, and then the user is now in control of the shark. So the goal is to uh, animate the shark a little bit and also to make sure we understand the basics of cameras. So to highlight the cameras, first of all, you can see that we had a move and orient to good vantage point of the clownfish. So that the clownfish could basically say his message at the start. I put the duration down to one on that just so that I can work with the shark here. I don't want that to happen for very long, so I just made that one. And then we have a move and orient to good vantage point of the shark, so now it's going to switch to that. So to get those camera controls, you want to be under this camera, and then you'll see that command that allows you to uh, move and orient to good vantage point of. So from a simple standpoint, from a third person or a third shark point of view in this case, uh, that's all you need to really know about cameras is that one command that can give you a good vantage point of whatever object you're trying to see. The other thing that I had to do is set the camera to the shark so that the camera follows the shark. Okay, so now let's work a little bit on the animations of the shark. And uh, from everything you've learned in Alice so far, hopefully you're starting to understand how important procedures can be. So we're going to go ahead and make a new shark procedure. So we're going to go to the shark and we're going to add a shark procedure and we're going to call this procedure shark animation and say OK on that. So you can see we have um, a shark animation procedure tab open and now we can play around with what we want to animate on the shark. So I'm going to give you some ideas here but you can basically do whatever you want, whatever you think makes the shark look realistic. So we're under this shark already, and uh, what I'm going to do is just orient the tail to the side to start. Um, I'm going to try to animate it so the tail can go back and forth. We're going to make it so the tail starts a 90, kind of 90 degree angle of the shark off to the side, just so that it's easy to make it go back and forth. So again, under this, we can find the tail of the shark, and we can go ahead and make sure that we have a get tail, um, turn, we're going to make it go left, although well, you could do right just as easily, by 0.25. And 0.25 is a 90 degree angle, if you picture a circle as being 1.0. So we have that, and now we're going to have a bunch of loops. So while true is true. Now that's confusing to some people, but true is always true. And that's all that means. So because that's never going to change, it's always going to do whatever we put in here. And all I'm going to try to do is make the shark's tail move back and forth. So if we could get the tail to turn um, right by point, let's do a point three five. We don't. I mean, you could do point five, and it'd be more drastic. I'm going to try point three five, which is more than ninety degrees but less than one eighty. And uh, let's also have it turn back the other direction. So left, we're going to have that as the same amount. Okay, so I've got a loop that basically makes the tail turn left and right back and forth after first positioning it to the left. So if I go back to my my first method, and I'm going to go and take that shark procedure now. So we have to be under the shark. And we have to put this animation. I want it to go at the same time that the fish is moving. So now I have the uh, shark animation procedure in a do together loop with the movement of the fish so that they're happening at the same time. I've also lowered pretty much every duration down to one second of the things that happened before. 
Um, that's really just to test out the animation part. You can put these back to whatever they need to be uh, later on, but I suggest you do that just so you can get to your animation quicker. So let's go ahead and run that now and see if the shark is moving. So we have the tail, we have the mouth, and we may have the eyes as well if you look really carefully. Uh, let's just find out. You'll remember there is a delay. Oh, there they go. And the delay is randomly set, I believe, on the eyes to an integer between 1 and 10. So anywhere between 1 and 10 seconds will pass between the closing of the eyes. And I thought that made it look a little bit more natural. I think just looking at the shark animation, I might go back and tweak the tail wagging movement. Um, and the mouth opening and closing, I've already tweaked a little bit because uh, it was too wide the first time I tried this. That's not on the video, but I did. Uh, so let's go ahead and close this and go back to the tail. We'll make a subtle change here. So maybe I want that to take longer, actually. And we'll test this again. And here we go. And yes, OK. And that might be a little wider than I want the tail to, but for the sake of this video, you can play around with it from there and see what looks good to you. I'm happy with it there for now. So I hope that taught you a little bit about the animation of the shark. You can imagine that you can also animate other characters if you'd like. All right, thanks for watching.